Hello, welcome to Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. So, um, for those of you who've been paying attention or saw my last video, I went to the special housing unit, whole bucket, uh, whatever you want to say. And uh, I'll go ahead and revisit that real quick. So what happened was last Wednesday, um, I was in my cell and they came and they had a guy that just had like a double knee transplant or double knee surgery or whatever. Anyway, he came in the unit, he was new. Um, he needed a bottom bunk, bottom tier pass. I was on the bottom tier. I had a cell that I didn't have a cellmate, cellie, cellmate. And uh, the guy next door to me didn't either. First, they tried to put him in the cell. The guy said he wasn't getting off the bottom bunk, and they said fine. Then they went over to two 20-year-olds who had single cells also. And one of them said that he had like a back injury. The next one had headaches or something like that. They were both working out at the same time. So they just didn't want to go on the top bunk, basically. So I have been keeping a single cell due to bladder issues, which is frequent urination. Uh, after my bladder was ruptured um, in the county jail, well, following surgery and bladder being ruptured, I had frequent urination. So like anywhere from three to seven times a night I might get up. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in a cell or had a door shut in, in a concrete room with a toilet in it. It's like um, getting your rectum sucked through your eardrums. So I mean, that's what it's like. It's just super loud. And it's just like the whole place vibrates. It's disrespectful to my cellmate if I'm up two, three, seven times a night. I say seven because last, last night I was, even if I stopped drinking water. Anyway, that's part of my bladder cancer thing that I've got going on and the, the rupturing of the bladder. So um, when they came to my cell and told me that I had to move, uh, it didn't go well because of the way it, it was said to me. Um, the person, the, the, the officer then said, well, if you don't move, you're going to go to the hole. And of course, me thinking mostly with my emotional brain, uh, it's bad, bad, bad quality in me. Is, is my is instead of being, doing rational thinking, I think emotionally. Anyway, and then I just said, you know, basically threatened me with a good time, the whole whatever, and I had a lot of choice words. And then I had an officer that was um, a real asshole who brought me to the hole, and uh, that could have got really bad. I will say that when we got over there, super nice. The guy, the guy came when they had me getting dressed out and stripped out and de-escalated the situation because I was definitely uh, in the red zone mentally, and it was everything. And I have a lot to say about staff here, uh, just doing it way better than the federal system, I have to say. But anyway, so, um, okay, I went to the hole. Uh, that's the gist of it. That's what happened. On That was on Wednesday, last Wednesday. On Friday, the DHO disciplinary hearing officer comes in. Of course, I plead not guilty for the shot because that's what I do. I just plead not guilty, and then I go to trial or the hearings or whatever. And um, they wrote it wrong. And I was when I read it, I was like, I'm, I, I got this beat. And so uh, I went in there, and I didn't. What I didn't know is as I was walking me downstairs, she already made up her mind. She read it, and she was kicking me out. She wanted, like, she thought it was stupid. She was kicking me out. So I went down there and explained my situation. She asked me what was up, and she's just like, Okay, I'm, I'm kicking you out. And I said, Okay. Here's the deal, I just want you to know. I'm refusing all sellies. So basically my line is gonna be, do you like to fight? I, I, I can fight, we're gonna fight. That's what I'm gonna tell all my sellies from now on. <laughs> I'm drawing, I've got a line in the sand and that's what I'm doing. Because it's disrespect, it's more humane for us to fox and beat the shit out of one another than for me to sit there and flush the toilet all night on a person. It is, it just is. Anyway, when I, to I, I said that to her, maybe not that. Well, I mean, I said it that strong. I don't think those exact words. And she's like, okay, whoa. Uh, I was going to just let you go, but now you're saying this. She goes, what are you trying to do? And I said, I'm, just, I'm telling you, I'm just going to stay in this. I, I'm fine here. I'm fine in this shoe. I don't care. Um, but the shoe's fine. And I'll, and I'll get to that in a minute because it really is kind of better than the units, to be honest. But anyway, I'll get there in a minute. So um, she goes, well, I can, I can keep you 20 days back here. And I said, as long as it keeps me in a single cell, I don't care what you do. I didn't say it rudely. I was actually very respectful. And she said, okay. They did keep me in a single cell. They had me all the way in the corner, like on punishment status, because they knew I was bucking on a cell. I mean, I wasn't going to take one. But they were very nice about it. They understood the situation totally, especially when I flushed the toilet to show them how much noise. They get it. They they 100% on my side, the staff was. So um, she put me in there. I thought I was going to do 20 days. By the way, so time goes by faster for me in the shoe. It's all about three meals coming to you. They, they feed you in, in your cell. I have no celly. I 
I'm going to say this. Even though I act, acted in an emotional way, it was really one of the better decisions I've made since I've been incarcerated thus far. And I say that because I really got to take a deep look inside myself, being in a cell in the corner all by myself. Did have a radio. There are TVs in there. So let me, let me do this first. So in the shoe, uh, two TVs, um, Rick every day, five days a week can go outside and you can walk in his big dog pens for an hour. Um, not too many people go out. Um, no incidences and most all, every shoe, especially how you using that I've been in, in it that I've been in, people bang, kick on the doors. There's going out of control. They're not, you know why? Because they've got TVs in there because they treat everybody with respect, unlike so much of the BOP. The BOP are trained, they go to hate school, a place called Glencoe. They're trained to be like assholes a lot of times. Not all of them. These people aren't trained at no hate school. So that's one of the differences that I've noticed in these private prison settings. And the, the TVs, people might balk and say, oh, you guys are criminals and you didn't, you're doing bad things in jail and you should be punished in the whole. No, it's the opposite. And you're gonna really freak out if you're on the bread and water crowd. Um, you know what they have? They have something called the step-down program when you're sentenced to shoot time. You know what that means? You get to get out of your cell during the daytime. You know what you get to go do? Um, go play PlayStation. Yeah, you call of duty. You get to go kill things in a cell. <laughs> they bring you downstairs to play video games. And, and you can stay down there for as long as you want unless, unless people are backed up and just play video games. You can shoot things. That's really good. They're teaching us how to shoot things and kill things in prison. I guess they're getting people prepared, right? I'm joking. I'm, but, um, and you know what, the people that bought, and I, once upon a time in my life, I might have been the hardliner that said, what the fuck, what are you guys doing? It works. It freaking works. The people in there are, they're calm, watch the TV, <laughs> playing video games, and the punishment is being locked down, okay? But anyway, getting back to myself, um, I had to really... I had four different choices on what I'm going to do when I get out. Four, okay? Four different directions I could go. Um, three of them were just running from my problems. And meaning running from uh, the loss that I, I the, the things that I've done, uh, for my divorce, okay? That's what it comes down to. Three of them are just running, going to different ends of the United States to get away from Fort Smith because that's where my ex-wife's going to be. And that's going to be hard. So that's, that's, what, that's where my brain was. Um, and I had to really sit down and think, and I, and I was really focused on one of those decisions. And I prayed on it. Like, like every morning for the first time in my life, I got on my hands and knees. Like literally on, well, one knee, because I can't bend one knee. It's, it's fucked up. But anyway, uh, and it's something I've never really done as far as I've prayed at night. I've been doing that since I started going to church last year every night, but not in the mornings when I wake up and there's something new I've been doing. And I've just been trying to search inside myself. Meditation that I learned in rehab last time. Meditation actually works. It's hard at first, but it, it's totally, it works a wonders. And um, what I come up with is, is the most, is the best thing for myself. Um, I, I made a contract to myself. I'm not gonna go into details, but this is what I'll say. Uh, I had to first figure out the necessities in life, which necessities, food, air, bread, breathing, I mean, shelter, food, water, right? So I have shelter. Um, but even if I have money when I get out, either from making money in prison or money I have via YouTube, whatever, when I get out, um, I don't care if it's $10,000, I still need to, I, I'll, that's going to be like, an, that's going to be put somewhere, like for, for, for bills or whatever, whatever. I got an IO to people, so forget the, the, the credit card it's not much anyway but um I, I have to have an immediate job like like a regular job you know what i mean and i have that um i got out today i've got that locked in uh 15 minutes from where i live in hartford it's 1975 an hour uh 50 hours a week that's priority number one um equal priority or i should say in priority is i realized that i'm i'm rocking it right now as far as as far as the as far as sobriety i need uh to stay that way and i know that i can and i'm going to it's not i'm not worried about it like i was a month or two ago i'm like oh my god i'm not going to fire for i'm so scared about you no i'm not i'm actually i, I said i got i got getting preachy a bit but there's a path that's been in front of me that i've been ignoring for a long time and there's a person that I used to work for, uh, him and his wife, 
for a short period of time who lives in Muldrow, Oklahoma, not far from me, who is the godfather of AAA. Why I didn't choose him to be my sponsor, I now really do believe why I did not do it, because I truly didn't want to be sober, because I wanted that, that way out. Okay, if, I'm, if I can't have it my way, and if I want to hurt somebody, I'm going to go use because I really wanted to use. I, I, I believe that now. I do. I, I had to really ask myself that question, and I think I did not want to be sober for whatever reason. Um, through that person, you know, if anybody's been on my merchandise section, one of my favorite t-shirts, really, and I got to get, get my own merchandise, by the way. Just <laughs> hang on to Big Daddy's belt loop, hold on to Big Dad's belt loop or whatever it was. Um, I got to hold on to Big Dad's belt loop, and Big Dad lives in Muldrow, Oklahoma. And... Um, he'll gladly take me it's going to be my sponsor I know that there's no doubt in my mind and like I threw him he's on the board of directors at the rehab that I worked I, that I was in and one of the things I wanted to do when I got out and I said it openly several times is I would like to go back and work there I'm pursuing that dream 100% I'm pursuing that dream whether it's there or whatever through him and I'm not don't just want him to be my sponsor for that reason he is the godfather of AA in that area and if anybody knows Fort Smith um, I, I'm not going to say but anyway you'll know what I'm talking about someday uh, help more people than, than he's been he's been sober a number of years rehab in and out of rehab 17 times before he got it right so um, that's where I'm going and uh, all the stuff about writ writing legal work and all that stuff I'm doing that YouTube I'm doing that it's all on my contract I'm going to do prison consulting for free I'm absolutely, I'm going to build my website back up. The one I built when I was high on methamphetamine and didn't know how to get onto it the next day. I um, spent all night, one night, but I'm going to do that, not go through the writ writing so much. Uh, I have a friend that's going to give me um, some briefs. He's going to toss me some briefs to do just for money. Um, actually, that's pretty lucrative. But, I'll, you know, I, I can't, I've got a lot on my plate. So, I mean, you know, a job, uh, going to, to have this sponsor that, I'll have to, that I'm going to see three days a week. Um, for sure, and um, uh, doing the other things, and I have a business plan uh, figured out. All of them realistic, one's immediate goals, one's short-term goals, one long-term goals, and the contract I titled do or get high, instead of do or die, do or just get high, that's what I put, do it or just get high, because that's what's going to happen. At 55 years old, I don't have much time <laughs> to get it right, that's just the way I look at it, and um, we'll see, that's, that's, uh, well, no, I, I take that back. The doubters will see. <laughs> the haters are going to write all the bad shit. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> who I love, who I like more than the first people that that have, that that have stuck by me. Give me praise. I just like haters. Whatever. I don't know. Whatever. It's sickness. Still, I, I like. I lot to work on. Uh, emotional response is front and center for sure. But the time I just did. Uh, I, I, like I said, the decision I made, I, I think it was the best, and I'm in a better spot now. I'm not in the same unit anymore. I'm in a different unit, um, and it's better, and I have... You have one minute remaining. My own cell, and uh, yeah, I'm going to do one more here. I'm, I'm going to sound off or weigh in on, a, on a several different topics on one more audio tonight. It is Thursday night. Uh, take care. Bye.